What you doing down there, bud? Oh, well, I've discovered a big problem. We were talking about putting the mask back on like in a couple days. It's not gonna happen now. I discovered this. This is our mass step, Crumbled basically. Up in your hands. Yeah, wet, muddy mass step. So we're going to have to remove the old mass step, cut out that old wood and fiberglass. This is definitely going to delay us by a little bit. Oh. Yeah, it is very dusty in here. <laughs> Holy moly. I'm Desiree, and this is my husband, Jordan. We're sailing around the world, or at least trying to. We made it as far as Panama on our first boat, Atticus 1, which was a really small fixer-upper. Now we're on our dream sailboat, Atticus 2, but she needs some work before she's ready to cross oceans. So we're working hard to finish up the last of our boat projects so we can sail south to the Caribbean. So this here is the mast step. The mast actually rests on this metal plate here. And this metal plate is supported by two blocks of wood that are fiberglass to the hull. Now it's important that they're fiberglass because not only does that keep the wood in place, but it also seals it from any water that is down in the bilge. And as you can see on this side, the wood here was fiberglass and sealed properly. But over here, there's no fiberglass on the front part of this wood. And so that has been exposed to water over the years and now it's rotting really badly. So we've actually been told that this is a somewhat common problem from the early production run of Pacific Seacraft 40. This boat was built in 1997. That was the first year that they started building Pacific Seacraft 40s. And this is actually hull number 11. So the first handful of PS 40s that they built were susceptible to having this issue. Once Pacific Seacraft realized that this was a problem, they changed the design and the construction of the mast step so that this stopped being an issue. So it's only earlier PS 40s that have this problem and we are unfortunately one of those boats. I need to get a better look at exactly what I'm dealing with. So step one, kind of clean this up a little bit and then pull the metal plate and metal fitting. But before I start removing anything, I'm just gonna take a couple pictures with measurements of like certain parts of the mass step. Now let's remove the plate. Okay, cool. That's the first part right there. So this is the bit that the mast actually sits on. But you can see this is aluminum and the metal that it was sitting on was stainless. And it doesn't look like there is anything to insulate the two metals from each other. So there's quite a bit of corrosion here. The slots on these heads of the screws here really have like a lot of corrosion caked into them. So this has gotta be one of my favorite tools and most used things on the boat. And that's a can of PB Blaster. And this just makes it so that when fasteners are like corroded shut and they don't wanna come undone, spray a little bit of this. It's like a penetrating oil. It gets down into all the little crevices and then breaks down the corrosion and the stuff that's keeping it stuck. Okay, and then the other trick up my sleeve is impact driver. Well, that's not doing the trick right now. I'm gonna clean up the rest of these, spray them with PB Blaster and let them sit for a bit and then come back to it and see if the impact driver will work then. That's not good. Well, I mean, at this point, all I can really hope to do is continue to clean out kind of the gaps around the fasteners and then continue to spray PB Blaster till slowly, hopefully, enough of that corrosive stuff inside there will get eaten away. So the impact driver isn't working. I tried earlier with my one like decent sized screwdriver and it was corroded up here a lot and just kind of bent. I'm gonna see if I can go get like a heavy duty flathead screwdriver. All right, so as we're getting closer to get Atticus ready to splash and head towards warmer waters, I really need to start getting on top of Oso's paperwork so that we can sail him into international waters legally. <laughs> I am not looking forward to this process, but at this point our dog is part of our family, so it's a worthwhile kind of logistical hassle. Luckily for me, Billy and Sierra from Tula's Endless Summer have a really awesome set of blog posts about bringing their dog into the Caribbean. So overall, it seems like the two factors you kind of have to think about ahead of time when you're sailing with your dog in the Caribbean is making sure that they're up to date on all their vaccinations and an 
Oso's case, he's a year old, and so by the time we get to the Bahamas, his vaccinations will expire like that month. And so what I've been doing is trying to go through all of his vaccinations and see if it's safe for him to get them a couple months early. And then I have to space those vaccinations out because I don't want to like inject Oso with like 12 vaccinations in one week. And then the second complicated factor about sailing with your dog in the Caribbean is that every time you leave one country to another, you have to find a vet in the country that you were just located to sign off on the the fact that your dog is in good health, parasite free, and up to date on all their vaccinations. And so I've heard this can be a little bit difficult depending on how remote you're sailing. For example, when we were in Boca del Toro, that was pretty much in the jungle, in the middle of nowhere, and I don't know if there was a vet on the island. So that would have required us to plan ahead and travel into the city and then schedule an appointment with a vet there. We're just going to have to play that one by ear. So far, everything seems pretty doable, but that's now, I know with paper work and checking into countries, it can be more complicated than it seems at face value, but we'll just cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> So just went down to Harbor Freight and picked up a attachment for a socket wrench that just has a flathead screwdriver bit on the end, just to give me a little bit of leverage and see if that's all I need. <sighs> okay, well, that's not doing the trick. So while I was at Harbor Freight, I picked up an impact screwdriver set. And so basically, kind of like that impact driver, it's just a way to combine a twisting motion with an impact force that when done at the exact same time will hopefully kind of dislodge this fastener. Okay, all right. Yeah, that one's actually moving. Oh. <laughs> oh, just getting tired of doubling over like this. Okay. What is the deal with this? What on earth it threads into? I don't have the faintest idea. All right, so we got Gerardo from Pacific Seacraft here to help me remove this thing. The plan is use some heat and then a stronger impact driver. Yeah. We got a real wide bit that's the same width as the actual slot on the fasteners. Wow, so it looks like these bolts were actually threaded into heli coils that themselves were threaded into the wood of the mast step. The problem being, I think these heli coils are mild steel. So the steel actually corroded a lot and like fused to the bolts. There we go. Oh, yeah. We got it out. So step one complete. Thank you very much, Hardo. Appreciate You're welcome. All right, well, we've had a minor setback. I am in the cabin right now, but all bundled up in my warmest jacket. Has our heater stopped working today? We think it's because we ran out of gas, so we put five gallons of diesel in, but it's still having some issues. Jordan's been troubleshooting it for the last hour or so. Dinner is ready to go. We've got asparagus, rice, and a delicious blend of veggies and pork tenderloin. How's it going, bud? <sighs> Just enjoying myself, yeah. just having a relaxing evening. Diesel is getting to the main pump and then that main pump is just not turning on. Something is happening so that the unit is refusing to operate. No bueno, because it's cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, good luck, buddy. So luckily when we bought Atticus, it was so cold in Branford, we splurged and got a West Marine boat heater. What do you think, Oso? You freezing your little butt off? I, I need to do more research and see if I can figure out what the issue is. It basically seems like the S-Bar heater is stopping itself from beginning its like startup process. All right, well, let's eat. Yeah.
All right, so today we are at the Pacific Seacraft factory and yard, and I am going to be cleaning some metal. This aluminum plate rests on a stainless steel plate, and so that is why there's all this white corrosion here because of the different metals just kind of sitting together for the last 24 years. And so Steve at Pacific Seacraft was kind enough to say we could come by and use their bead blaster to be able to clean this bad boy up and then prime it and paint it. All right, let's see how we did. It's dusty. Sweet. So I mean, pretty much all the corrosion is gone. All right, so real quick before we paint, we mixed up a solution of 50-50 muriatic acid and water. I'm just gonna apply it to the surface of the metal so that the little bits of aluminum oxide that are left in the crevices and the craters will all kind of dissolve and go away. So I just took this outside to rinse it off and now I'm gonna let it dry, wipe it down with acetone, get rid of all the moisture, and then go paint it. Well, it is a very dusty and noisy day on Atticus today. Jordan is down below working on our mast step issue, and I'm taking advantage of this weather to prep the cap rail for a couple of coats of fresh varnish. You might remember when we installed the new stern arch, we had to put a couple of the mounts in a new position. Where the old mounts were, it's just kind of like exposed wood right now. But I've also noticed a couple of problem areas on our cap rail that are delaminating and chipping away hardcore. And some of them have grown pretty significantly, so we've covered those with Gorilla Tape for the time being. But it's time to take that Gorilla Tape off, prep those areas to sand, and then slap on a coat of varnish to protect that wood. So now that I've removed the metal plates of the mast step, it's now time to remove those wood blocks and the fiberglass that connects it to the hull. I'm using this reciprocating saw because it doesn't produce a lot of dust. And then I've also got my vacuum at the ready right here. So I'm gonna try to kind of cut and vacuum simultaneously. Wow, yeah, that's going really well. The one thing I'm really being careful of here is, well, I don't wanna cut through the hull. I mean, it's kind of a big thing. So I'm making sure that the angle of the blade more or less matches the angle of the hull so that I'm just cutting away the fiberglass over the mast step. So far, I'm very happy with how this is going. Like the fiberglass isn't too thick and I'm able to get an angle that I feel is not dangerous. So this is good so far. Yeah, you can see, I mean, this is all the wood. This wood is in okay shape, but like over here, you can see it's dark and starting to rot. And then it goes over here. And this is what I felt earlier. Wow, yeah, look at that. This wood was deep in there and it is wet. Yeah, very good thing that we're doing this. Now, like the real trick is just getting the blade into a position where I can cut the remaining fiberglass without cutting the hull itself. So, you know, kind of a difficult thing to get the tool all the way down in there into that bilge area. The wood on this starboard side is in really good shape. Like some of it's a little bit rotten, but most of it's just fine. And so it's a whole lot harder to remove because the bond between it and the hull is still really good. So I might have to just cut this thing into pieces like one little bit at a time, which is a lot more labor intensive and time intensive, but it's like a band-aid. I just gotta do it. Oh, there you go. 
That's the last piece of wood. There's a whole lot more cleaning up and grinding that I gotta do, but that's gonna wait till tomorrow because I'm beat, man. My body is done. Woo! All right, buddy. Ooh. It's Sunday. Wow. That's enough sanding. Okay, my thumb's starting to hurt. <laughs> I bet yeah. your whole body's hurting though, huh? It is, yeah. <laughs> I just cleaned up down below. Well, that was a productive Sunday. Cheers, yeah, true enough. I love renaming boat ceremonies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do have a lot of leftover champagne, mm -hmm. that is for sure. <laughs> Get over here, you little He's monster. Stinker. He is so gross. I'm pretty gross today, too. You need to too. wash him. All right, well, today is another day. Although I've removed most of the wood and most of the actual structure of the mast step, there's a lot of cleaning up that I gotta do. The hull is made out of resin and fiberglass. And so the fiberglass is what keeps it all together and structurally intact. This stuff I'm hacking away at now is just cured resin from when they bonded the mast step in place. And so it doesn't have any fibers in it. That's why it's so easy to chip away. I'm not doing any damage to the hull here. I'm not swinging hard enough to do damage. Just hitting it just hard enough for that resin that doesn't have fibers in it to break apart. Okay, I think I'm gonna try the grinder. Oh God, I'm nervous. Wish me luck here. Okay, I am at a point now where just about the only thing I can do is use that grinder. So I'm just gonna use this big tarp to uh, at least make sure that the dust doesn't fly into the rest of the boat. Woo! Yeah, it is very dusty in here. <laughs> Holy moly. Oh. Wow, okay, I think I'm gonna go outside, take a break. Oh God, oh God, oh. I'm like that kid from the Peanuts. You're an absolute mess, just look at yourself. Oh. I feel there. Tired. I'm like kind of engaging. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is that about? <laughs> Thank you, buddy. I smell different, huh? Yeah, it's not good. Get out of here. Oh my gosh. My lower body is just exhausted. Mm -hmm. I'm getting close though. I'm getting there. That's good. 